So it's been about a week now since the National Association of Realtors um, settled their lawsuit. And I've sat back and I've watched and I've watched hours and hours and hours of content on what happened, where we're going, how we can adapt. And I wanted to take some time to just share my opinion. Uh, first of all, I'm not an attorney. I'm not a representative of Remax. I'm not a representative of the, of the National Association of Realtors. This is simply my opinion. And who am I? I'm a real estate broker that's been licensed 25 years. I got my real estate license in 1999. And over the last 25 years, uh, as many of you know, I've been frankly disgusted with our industry. And this lawsuit that's finally been settled by the National Association of Realtors, unfortunately, is a long time coming. So what happened? Well, as you read in the headlines, the National Association of Realtors just settled for approximately $418 million on a consumer lawsuit. What is that lawsuit? Well, that lawsuit was brought about, um, I believe it was in Missouri, okay? And it was brought about by the consumer and some bloodthirsty attorneys, but that's neither here nor there. And the consumers came forth and said that you realtors are uh, conspiring to drive commission rates up. And we don't feel that we should have to pay 6% anymore. In fact, we don't feel that we should have to pay a buyer's agent at all if we're selling our home using a realtor through the MLS service, uh, through the local association of realtors. So what happened was this started to gain some traction and gain some momentum, and the Department of Justice got behind this. Well, once the Department of Justice got behind this, I believe the National Association of Realtors panicked and said, let's settle, let's get this done before the Debar Department of Justice uh, gets their fingers in this any further. First of all, I want to <laughs> thank the National Association of Realtors for nothing. I've paid my dues for 25 years and they did nothing to support us through this entire uh, lawsuit. Uh, I think they settled, they panicked, and now we're going to pay for it. What will happen is our dues will go up and we'll eventually pay for this $418 million lawsuit. Okay, so let me just back up and tell you how uh, commissions have worked in the past and why the consumer felt that this wasn't something they had to participate in. So in the 25 years I've been doing this, and frankly in the 50 plus years that the Association of Realtors has been around and the MLSs have been around, traditionally a seller will list their home for sale with a realtor. That realtor charges a percent, and I'm not here to set fees, I'm just here to tell you that that average that has come out in the headlines has been 6%. So the 6% listing fee typically gets split between uh, the seller's agent and the buyer's agent. So in the MLS, the multiple listing service, us as realtors offer what's called a, a buyer's agent commission to a buyer's broker or a buyer's agent. So if they sell that house, let's call it a $500,000 house, and there's a 6% commission, uh, traditionally the 30,000 that's being paid out gets split something like 50-50. So 15,000 to the seller's agent and 15,000 to the buyer's agent. Now keep in mind that fee starts at a brokerage level and gets trimmed down to uh, different splits and different expenses before that agent gets what's left. So 15,000 does sound like a lot of money, uh, but at the end of the day, not every agent walks away and, and, and cuts a check for $15,000 in their pocket. Well, now the consumer has come out and said that that's too much. We don't feel like we should have to pay that buyer's agent anything. And what they've said is that realtors strong armed them or forced them to uh, pay that total 6% so that there would be a co cooperating commission. Well, one thing a consumer should know is nobody was ever forced into anything. There's always been uh, negotiations involved in commission. I charge one fee, my competitors may charge something else. Some people charge a flat fee. There's no set fee, it never has been a set fee. I think what happened is um, most consumers just assumed a fee was a fee and that's what they had to pay. So there's a little bit of assumption that went on with that. There was never any sort of a set fee in our industry. Uh, in fact, I believe the national average for real estate commissions last two or three years during this hot market has come down closer to 5%. So what does that mean moving forward? Well, moving forward, sellers in July, now this hasn't been settled, we believe it will get settled, but sellers in July uh, won't have to offer a buyer's agent commission through the multiple listing service. In fact, us as real estate professionals can no longer advertise a buyer's agent fee through the multiple listing service. So that 3% that we were offering or 2.7 or 2.5, whatever it was that we we're offering as an incentive for buyer's agents to bring their buyers through a property, no longer can be advertised for the multiple listing service, okay? 
Well, what I've seen and what, what I've watched over the last week now, trying to educate myself on this, has really disgusted me. Um, frankly, I think that realtors brought this on themselves, okay? We, if you go back to the last 10 years of reality shows and you know, we, we'd see these million dollar listing shows where they drive their Ferrari to an open house, show the house once and collect a check for $300,000. Our industry has the lowest bar of entry of any industry that I'm aware of. You take 90 hours of real estate class, you pass a test, you get a license. Now you're a walking, talking lockbox. And I've always said that. Buyer's agents the last three years, especially during this, this seller's market, have been nothing more than a walking, talking lockbox. So what I've seen is people go take their 90 hours of real estate class and call 10 of their friends and say, hey, if you're gonna buy a house, use me. Well, their friends feel obligated to use them. Now they've got their walking, talking lockbox friend that opens doors, fills in a purchase agreement and submits an offer over asking price. There's no negotiations, there's no education, there's no counseling a buyer. It's just, I'll show you that house, I'll write you the offer and uh, you can purchase the home for a price at or above asking price. So frankly, I tend to agree with the consumer. Uh, I'm on the same page as them and I think this was needed. We needed some transparency in the industry as to how people get paid uh, because I've seen too many buyers agents uh, collect money, frankly, I don't think that they deserve. And you can agree to disagree with me if you're a realtor watching this, but I will say that 50% of the buyers agents and 50% of realtors in general uh, will likely be out of the business, and that's good. Our industry needs a cleansing right now. That walking, talking lockbox, that uneducated realtor uh, that uh, is just, in my opinion, more or less uh, getting in the way of a transaction and costing the consumer more money uh, is going to go away. And I want to thank the consumers actually for bringing this to, to the attention of uh, other consumers because I think this industry needs a hard reset. This industry needs to look at itself and this industry needs to realize that we brought this on ourselves. We haven't made any changes to the licensing process uh, as, this, as the market has changed and as it's gotten more challenging and more difficult uh, for buyers to buy. And the, the purchase agreements have gotten more complicated. We've made zero changes to the licensing. So what I've watched the last five years is all of our training and all of our education has been around how to convince you, the buyer, to buy in any market and how to convince you, the seller, to sell in any market. And it's been really sad. It's been really frustrating to watch that our training revolves around convincing you uh, to pur purchase or sell a home in any market. And I think you've seen a lot of posts on social media, you've seen a lot of videos on social media that now's a great time to buy or now's a great time to sell. And whether that interest rate has been at 8% or at 2%, uh, it's been that same message to the consumer. And the messages I've been seeing on social media and uh, CEOs of, of major companies, our outgoing CEO of Remax is, we're all in this together. And what these, these agents and industry experts uh, are saying is, we're all gonna figure out a way how we can still get paid. And to me, that's, that's, that's really, really sad. Um, we're missing the point here. And the point of this entire lawsuit is the consumer is frustrated, the consumer is disgusted, and the consumer feels we don't bring the value of 2.7, 3%, whatever it is to the transaction as a buyer's agent. The entire industry is missing the point of this lawsuit. We are getting in the way of the transaction because we don't know what we're doing. And when I say we, I mean us as an industry, all of the realtors out there. Now, I'm generalizing. There's still 5 to 10% of the industry that knows what they're doing, that brings some benefit to a buyer. But in the market that we've been in the last three, four, five years, we've done nothing more than, like I said, open doors and fill in purchase agreements. Now, many of you may disagree. Uh, I have a very unpopular opinion about realtors and about our industry. And I think I share the same opinion that the consumer does. Uh, we, no disrespect to car salesmen, but we uh, are, are really one step above or below uh, car salesmen. And frankly, I just bought a car and had a better experience buying a car than I, I have seen most of my clients and customers experience buying a home. I think our industry needs this hard reset. Our industry needs to change. And the consumer has spoken and said, it's time for change. And I'm tired of hearing other realtors out there trying to find creative, backhanded, slimy ways to continue to collect a buyer's agent commission. Our job in the industry, as I see it, especially as a seller's agent, is to do one thing. And I've always told my sellers, this is, this is what you're hiring me to do, it is to properly price your home so that we can competitively compete in the marketplace and I can get you the most amount of money 
with the least amount of pain. It's that simple. You're hiring me to market your home, find a buyer, use my experience, use my education to make the process as smooth and as painless as possible. It's that simple. Having to pay a buyer's agent, in my opinion, doesn't necessarily benefit a seller. Now it can, and it can in certain markets, it can in certain conditions, it can in certain price points, but it doesn't necessarily benefit a seller to have to pay a buyer's agent. Uh, in fact, I would rather deal, as a seller's agent, I would rather deal with the buyer directly so they can get the, the straightforward facts, truth, and information about that home and not try to get information from somebody that has no idea what they're doing or no idea about the product that they're selling and that product being the house. And most are clueless. Uh, I think the consumer would laugh at what goes on behind the scenes in our industry. The lack of professionalism when it comes to filling out a purchase agreement, the lack of knowledge when it comes to financing, uh, and frankly, some of the uh, very risky positions buyers agents have put their buyers in the last five years. So I think as an industry, it's time for us to take a step back, reevaluate what the consumer wants, adjust and adapt to the consumer's needs. It's not time for us to take a step back and say, how do we continue to get paid in this transaction? I'm tired of seeing that, I'm disgusted by that, and I hope some of you get this message and uh, really take some time to think about that right now. So if you're a buyer, what should you do? Well, nothing is going to change at this point. Uh, this lawsuit is still pending. We do believe it'll get settled. And come July, there'll be some major changes in the real estate industry. And that biggest change is you as a buyer are going to have to pay your buyer's agent directly and pay them a fee that you feel your buyer's agent is worth. It's gonna create a lot of headaches. It's gonna create a lot of uh, pain. And I think it's going to create a race to the bottom in our industry. I think buyer's agents are gonna figure out a way to be the cheapest agent out there so that they continue to uh, stay in this business. But you as a buyer right now, I would encourage you to align yourself with a good experienced professional that clearly understands what's happening in this market so that whether you buy now or after July, you're positioned with somebody that can navigate through uh, this uncharted territory that we're about to enter. One of the main questions I'm getting asked by buyers and sellers right now is this NAR lawsuit going to affect home prices? And the answer to that is no. Home prices have been dictated by supply and demand and supply and demand only. The last three or four years during the COVID pandemic and beyond, we've seen a very, very low supply and a very high demand, thus driving home prices up. Uh, I don't see home prices coming down. I just see sellers netting more for their home sale because they don't have to pay a buyer's agent. So as a seller, what should you do? Well, it's business as usual for now. In the next 90 days, there's a lot to figure out. There's a lot the local association, the national association, us as realtors have to figure out as to how all this works. I would encourage sellers right now to continue to pay a buyer's agent. I think until we can figure out how this all looks, it's something that it's too soon to make that change. But as we navigate into July and beyond, when this goes into effect, again, make sure that you're partnered with somebody that can pivot in the direction that the market is going because it's gonna happen fast and you need an agent and a professional that's on top of this that understands how to transition into the new world of selling real estate. Realtors, stop making this NAR lawsuit about you and your needs. I'm seeing too many realtors out there talk about how they can still figure out a way to get paid as a buyer's agent. Let's take a step back and let's listen to what the consumer has to say and make this about the consumer and the consumer's needs. The July real estate industry is gonna look a lot different than today. I would advise you to listen to the consumer, change and adapt to their needs. Don't listen to your bank account and change and adapt to your financial needs. So as a result of this NAR lawsuit, I think there'll be some real positive things that will come out of it. I think 25 to as much as 50% of uh, the realtors will get out of the industry. Uh, they just can't survive. It's unfortunate, but it was needed. We have way too many realtors in the industry. And I think that the consumer has forced us to make this industry and how we get paid more transparent. And I think transparency is good. I think that opens up the opportunity for the consumer to have choices, and save money. If you're a buyer or seller and you're confused about this whole NAR lawsuit and what this $418 million is all about, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to give you some background on what's happening, how it affects you as a buyer, how it might affect you as a seller. And keep in mind that this isn't immediate. This still needs to be approved. 
Uh, but come July, there are going to be changes in our industry, uh, and it's going to be a positive thing for you, the consumer. Please reach out to me, and we can have a confidential conversation as to how this may or may not affect you and your purchase or sale.